you're new to the, the cast for her. This is my for first ever burlesque thing, hands down, and first mirrorless thing. So. Oh, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. So what's that feel like then? It's, am I allowed to swear? Yes. It's fucking great. <laughs> This is something I've been looking forward to doing for a very, very long time, but I never really had the time or the funds to get into it. So when I bumped into Farrell accidentally and she kind of just told her about my passion for it, she's like, oh, do you want to do this? And I'm like, yes, please, can I? And it ended up working out in my favor, so I'm really, really stoked to be part of it. And you get to be a fairly beloved character in your, your debut as well, so. It's pretty awesome. One of the few times I'm very grateful for the melanin in my skin. <laughs> So you're new to the cast this show? Yeah, I'm new to the, the, the stage performances, yeah. Uh, but you have been with Geek Enders for a while. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I did some of the hosting for some of the shows last year. So what's it like take, taking the leap into It's a bit of a different leap, stride. Yeah. Um, hosting was new to me, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And this is a whole new direction as well, stage performance. Um, bigger crowds, standard scripts, musical numbers. I'm not a dancer, so this is the first time I'll be dancing. How are you finding it? Easy enough, you know, I'm a musician, so, you know, and a drummer, so remembering patterns is super easy for me. <laughs> and that's all it is, it's just making sure the legs keep up. <laughs> and uh, we were just talking to, to Lando uh, earlier uh, about uh, making your debut in the genre, so into the, into the <clears throat> bah, let me try that again. We were talking to Lando earlier about making your debut into such a, a major character, a beloved character. Yeah. What's that like? I, it's a little nervous because you know if you're taking a character that so many people love, uh, so many people wanted to be when they grew up. I mean, I wanted to be Boba Fett. Who didn't want to be Boba Fett? Um, you're taking a character not only that is you know loved and desired um, and a role model in a sense, but you're putting it in a new light and being a new performer. And it's just like, oh man, I'm doing two things at once. I'm taking your childhood. And I'm already changing it, but am I messing it up or am I making it good? So that's a little nervous, but you know, I love new challenges. I love new adventures. So, is it tough to see out of the helmet? I haven't had to wear the helmet yet. Um, in all my performances, I fake take off the helmet. <laughs> um, but you know what? I, 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 I've seen some of the stormtroopers do it, and they seem like they have enough visual range that I should be able to pull it off. I don't need a lot of peripheral, luckily enough. All right. And so, uh, what's it like to revisit this character from what was a, a pretty big smash when it came out? Well, it's not as big of a part, but I just love being this character, so even if it's just like a couple acts, it's fine with me. And uh, what is it about uh, playing Obi-Wan that's that fun for you? Well, I grew up watching the movies religiously, so being able to just spoof some of my favorite characters are just lots and lots of fun, especially poking fun of the original original trilogy, remake, reboot, prequel, whatever you want to call them, trilogy. Yeah, the ones we don't sp uh, speak of. Yeah, anything, great. Now would you say more Alec Guinness or more Ewan McGregor? Well, I'm definitely going more for uh, Alec Guinness, just because he has the deep, you know, almost uh, Ringo style, John Lennon, oh boy, we got to kick him out of the band type voice. Oh, it's great. I mean, I don't know, just, it's just such a fun character, and I just, I, I love everything about this character, just about his relationship with R2, and just down to his walk, and I mean, it's not very often that you actually get to find theater that you can be so goofy and over the top with, but I just find with, um, just with this character, I have so much more freedom just to kind of really explore and have a lot of fun with it. And I think, yeah, just the, the character, the character brings out the best in me. And how long have you been doing uh, Nerdlesque? Nerdlesque, um, I guess this is my first year. Okay. I mean, I, I, I met Fairleth up in Barkerville when she was working there, and I didn't really know what burlesque was. I'd never really seen burlesque, never really done it. Um, but I just like to dance. I just really like to dance. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we mentioned the walk, which is a real signature walk for C3PO. <laughs> how, how did you go about finding that? Um, just trial and error. Well, it's you, you kind of have, you have to look at it. You have to break him down like a robot. I mean, he doesn't have hip flexors really. He just kind of it just does this. You know, he he just gyrates and he doesn't have a whole lot of mobility. So it's kind of 
I, I just complete, I lock my knees and I just kind of tilt my body side to side. I'm just really excited. It's all super great uh, and I find that we're more prepared this time than we were before and like the crowd is so excited for what we've got coming forward. So more prepared, better dances and just overall it's going to be a better show. I know that. Yeah. Now, you do have the luxury, you could say, of being the only one on roller skates. Yes. Um, how do you find working that into it where no one else has to? And it, it is more difficult, but it's still we still find ways that we can still have me participate in the dances without, uh, without actually falling on my face, which does happen sometimes, but I'm getting way better. That's the other thing, too, is this time around I've had so much more practice. I had only learned to roller skate for the last show. I'd never roller skated before, so much more limitations than the month's worth of work I've had to kind of get it all figured out. Yeah. And uh, what's it like uh, having a part where you're communicating strictly through sound? Whistles and beeps. Yeah. Well, it's pretty important to know like the person you're working with. It's great with Bram because he he knows his lines and he's really good about responding and we, we go through different movements. Like I have to communicate in body language more than anything because whistles they can kind of denote like humor or frustration, but it's, it's limited to that. And when a cast member has to go and use their next line off of that, it has to do with body language and movement in order to have them remember, really. So that's that's cool. It's definitely cool, but it takes a little bit more practice, right? Um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so the opportunity to do this was super fun. So I was very excited when it continued on with the rest of the sagas. Excellent. Um, and uh, how do you find the show uh, first time around compared to, or things, now compared to first time around? Things are a lot more organized. The choreography is super stepped up. So really excited to see it a little more polished. And everyone's worked together before, so there's a lot more flow and camaraderie. So it's 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 fun. It's like going to work, only having lots and lots of fun, and getting a workout, and taking your clothes off all at the same time. Um, I was talking to uh, R two D two. Uh, about the, the challenges of uh, having to communicate non-verbally the whole time. So, how are you uh, um, finding that? It's fun. It's definitely more of a challenge. I wish you could see Fearless Skirt because she actually has something written for everything R2D2 and Chewbacca say, and you won't always hear the translation because they don't always have a verbal follow-up from the humans. So, some of it's really brilliant trying to get across what Chewbacca is supposed to be saying. Um, for instance, there's a scene where um, Leia says, I thought you were supposed to know this guy, and Chewbacca says, what about the time you banged his mom? Of course, the audience will never hear that, and all Han says is, I'm sure he's forgotten all about that. So, of course, I have to be like, <laughs> to try to convey that. So, Carol's writing is brilliant. So, it's just a, a challenge to try to kind of convey it and make it fun and a good experience for the audience. And what's it like making fur sexy? Uh, I've always made fur sexy. That's, a, that's between me and my waxer. Great, I mean it's really nice. It's really fun because uh, the costume was already done so I could add things and, and kind of go back into the character a bit more. Go back, watch the beginning, kind of go where he was and stuff like that. And it's kind of fun because we do a spin as a woman so I like that too. It's kind of fun to kind of draw on some of the actual character and like his actual motives and kind of bring that as well as turn it into a bit of a woman aspect as well for like power and stuff. It's the same, I think, underlying themes that he has, being corrupted by power and stuff like that and what that would look like for a woman. Excellent. And uh, as far as the show itself, um, how are you finding everything coming back? How has it uh, changed from the first show to this show? It's good. It's nice because um, with any like theater cast or anything like that, especially with people who care so much about this, and we all do, it's really nice to come back to a group you already know because you trust people now and she'll try things maybe you wouldn't try before that may look stupid or look great, you just don't know because there's a bit of trust there and a bit of, you don't want to mess with something that's so iconic. So it's like people are like, okay, we'll just follow the script, we'll just do it the right way with Nude Hope. And now it's like, okay, well let's go a bit further, let's see, maybe if I say this, is this funny, is this cool, like, does this read, and, and you trust people more. I think there's a bit more bonding and everyone says, you know. Um, theater companies like family and stuff like that, and it really feels like that. It starts to get more and more trusting, which is good. And what's it like playing such an iconic character? Something like a character that a lot of people just kill to play. Oh my god, it's so much fun. When uh, Farrah asked me if she wanted to, I was like, yes, absolutely. And um, I was lucky because the way I started playing it was pretty much the way everybody wanted me to. Like, people were like, yes, yes, like, you did it right. I like that. So I was like, okay. So I was just like, she basically told me, she was like, I think the way you should do this is Jessica Rabbit. 
but you have a bunch of power. And I was like, this is fantastic. And I was like, I think it just, it worked a lot of my strengths. So it's just so much fun to do because it's not like hard, hard work. It's all to play into strengths that I already like. So it's awesome. It's so much fun. Um, it's actually, it's a lot more fun. I think the first time we had no idea what we were doing or sort of the magnitude of uh, how it's going to catch on and be received. And um, as for me, I, I've been having a lot more fun with the character um, this time around. And actually during the remount of our first show, I started to loosen up a little bit and play with the character. Whereas I think in the first couple shows, I was anxious about sort of being Mark Hamill and like, I'm trying to say the lines the way he says them. Um, and then I sort of was able to, I guess, get good enough at that that I was like, okay, now I'm going to let that go and just be the faggiest, most like outrageous um, caricature version of Mark Hamill and sort of be the, the fabulous burlesque version of Luke Skywalker. So this time I'm just coming into it with that mindset and I'm doing way more crazy shit uh, than I would have let myself do, I think, in the first one. Now, I think... Um more than any of the other characters in, in the original show, Luke changed the most from the first to second uh, movie. So how, how are you finding incorporating that this time around? Um, it's interesting. Uh, I, should, I should, full disclosure, I'm not a big Star Wars fan, so I'm not like an expert on the movies. I've seen them. Um, but uh, for me, I guess it's interesting that we've kind of Luke is very inept in our second show, whereas I think Luke is actually starting to get his footing as kind of a Jedi in training in the second movie, um, I get my footing kind of late in the show. So you see me being fairly derpy uh, through my whole Yoda training and we do that Mulan song, I'll make a man out of you. I'm just totally hopeless, I'm falling over. and um, So I kind of feel like it's a bit of a regression, interestingly, because we thought we were only doing the first show and at the end of that show I kind of got sexy and destroyed the Death Star. Now I'm back to like, oh Mulan, I'm so confused by everything. So um, I think that I try to sort of do, rather than be like, I have had big changes since the last show, I try to do like, I start out a little bit more like Derpy Luke and try to do within this show a bit of a kind of like, not a Jedi. <laughs> Although still a clueless and a bit like of an arrogant Jedi who doesn't quite know what he's tangling with. Now, um, Luke, uh, I mean, as you said, has got a, I mean, is a big character in, in the science fiction world. So, is there any intimidation coming into it something that's a, a sort of beloved character? Absolutely. And like I said, um, in the first, uh, in A New Hope, I was kind of anxious about, like, am I doing it enough the way it is in the movies? Am I close enough to kind of the way Mark Hamill says certain lines? Um, um, and actually, just the sort of the way that people would come up and talk to me after the shows, being like, Luke, we love you, Luke, we want pictures with you, and they call me Luke, and I was just like, okay, this is like a huge thing, like people love this character. Some people hate the character, I understand both sides. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think what sort of freed me up was just realizing that I have something to bring to the character that maybe people haven't seen before, um, and so to kind of try my best to honor the way they've seen him portrayed in the past, and then add a little something for people who are kind of waiting to see him be made fun of in loving ways, because he's a character you can easily poke fun at, and that we do a lot of that. <laughs> What's your favorite song in the show? Is that mine? Include anyone. Actually, I have to say, Boba Fett's song, Smooth Operator. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but hands down, it is, I think, everyone's favorite in the show, because as soon as Rael gets on stage, it just um, becomes Boba Fett in the sleeviest way possible. And it's so great to watch. I'm actually really jealous of anybody who gets to be in the audience this year from start to finish in his full costume because we're going to be heading out of this backstage for him. I have to say, um, boom boom with the uh, the Battle of Hoth. I don't know what it is, but it's just they're 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 dancing at each other and. It's just all this swirling around, and they just got like a really fun, like angsty attitude to it. I'm not a fan of the song outside of the show, but inside of it, it just looks amazing. The one song that I think is my favorite out of this entire show, that would be mine, and it's a surprise. Favorite song is my uh, me and R2D2 stream ballet, uh, Somewhere Out There. Excellent. Beautiful. Oh gosh, okay, so 
uh, Boba Fett song I really quite like, uh, where he's with Han Solo and uh, what is that? With Smooth Operator. Yeah, it is really sexy and just it, it has a lot of like gender bending relationship things that are kind of neat also to see. Yeah, mm. Come Sail Away is fun. Uh, I'm gonna go with Come Sail Away. Yeah. But I think the song that's playing in my head most is Everything Is Awesome. I really can't really get the song like, right away. So I think that would probably be my favorite just out of. I can't get it out of my head. Um, oh, definitely my duet with um, the ghost of Obi Wan. Uh, we do a beautifully heartrending and silly duet. So, uh, what's one reason you would say for people to come and see this show? Me besides seeing me. Besides seeing you. Seeing me. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, no, I think it's gonna be really cool for people who don't know anything about burlesque, who don't really want to approach it because they may think that, oh, it's kind of like stripping, it's gonna be super sleazy. It really isn't, and one way to make it super comfortable for everybody, both performers and uh, entertainers and audience members, is to approach it from something that everybody loves, and who doesn't like Star Wars? So that's a really easy avenue for people to kind of know the community, know about burlesque in general, and if there's someone like me who may not have ever heard about it before, then they can try their own hand at it. I have to take my clothes off. Good answer. <laughs> well, if you love the first one, you're just gonna love this one. We amped up all the, all the dances, they're twice as good as they were in the first time, and we're just here to entertain you. Because it is one of the most unique experiences that you can find in Vancouver theater, and just anywhere. It's prime location, the fans, and the content, and the performers just make the show. It's such a, it's such a raw, unforgiving, slap in the face of funness. You Excellent. can quote me on that. I will. Because <laughs> it is amazing, because it's more glitter and, and fantastic people and great looking and just the most, it's going to be so good. I can't just name one amazing thing about it. The crowd is awesome, and, and the theme is awesome, and the production is awesome. It's going to be great. Uh, you like laughter and fun. If you are a grumpy cat, you probably won't enjoy it. Uh, anyone else would definitely enjoy it. It doesn't matter whether you like burlesque or not. It's just a balls to the wall, funny, good time show. I don't think anyone would be disappointed. Unless they're offended by me. And then they probably don't want to learn. The reason I would come and see the show if I wasn't in or didn't know anyone is because it's iconic and it's it's basically all those things you'll joke about with your friends in the show. When I see something that I love and they do it right, they do it justice, they do a funnier version of it and kind of tease at different things and put innuendos in that you're like, oh yeah, like Obi-Wan's kind of a weird, lonely old man. And then when he actually says it and puts it out there, you're like, oh my God, I've been joking about that with so-and-so for so long. And I just think when it's done correctly, it's done in a funny way, it's done in a smart way with a good script and people really in their characters. It's just like, oh my God, I'm so excited. It's fun and it's funny and it's that magical kind of moment that you're in a live audience with everyone else. And we also, this show has more audience interaction, which is always super fun. I get super pumped with things like that. I, I love, that's why I would go is because I want to see my favorite characters doing funny things that I've always joked about with my friends, basically. And the fact that I want to throw things at characters as well, which is in our new show. Um, I'd say just, you're going to laugh so hard. Um, I, we just have we had sold out houses for all of the Geek Ender shows that we've done now, uh, these big productions, and sometimes we just have to wait like what feels like hours to deliver our next line because the laughter in the house is just so deafening. Uh, people are just having such a great time at these shows, whether they come into it as burlesque fans, as Star Wars fans, as both, or even neither. Some just get dragged along and they're like, this is fucking hilarious. So yeah, it's funny. It's very, like, if you love to laugh, you will love the show.